So uh, just leaving Walgreens and bought a couple of things, some canned food, microwavable goods, things like that. Stuff that I would eat just in case this stuff still doesn't go down in terms of this coronavirus. But just doing a little bit of prepping just to make sure. I do not think it's going to be that serious. But at the same time, I want to err on the side of caution because I'm not trying to be out here with these possible zombies and shit like that. Um, if I could have something that's gonna last me a couple weeks that I could ration out, you know what I mean? Like take a, a can of soup, split that in half between uh, myself and uh, family members, uh, my mom, my aunt, that is, uh, then I'll rock with that and uh, go from there. Um, really, I don't think it's gonna be that serious down here in Florida. I'm hoping the summer will kick in and possibly uh, affect the virus in terms of its spread uh, in a good way. But I'm not exactly sure and I'm not really somebody that's on top of that type of stuff. Um, as far as the markets going down, I was very excited about that. Um, I bought a couple, I put a couple extra dollars into my portfolios. They've since bounced back um, and made some money. So bought a little bit of that small dip that was there. Kind of, you know, a little blood in the water. Made sure, you know, I was one of the sharks out there trying to scobble something up. So that kind of worked out fairly well. Um, just got a couple more shares of some stuff. I didn't put much into it. Um, I was already going to put money into it because I had gotten my bonus. So it was literally just perfect timing. I put more to the side um, in cash just to take advantage of anything happening in the future in terms of recession. Um, as you can see, the theme here is just like prepping and being cautious about certain things, certain moves. Um, I'm getting better with it. I'm still not totally there yet where I want to be, I should say. I still, uh, my discretionary spending or my, uh, my frivolous spending is still kind of high. I'm not going to lie. You know, I just bought a network, a 10 gig network switch just to test it out. Had a little extra money in a sense. And I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and, uh, put it to this. So trying that um looks like it's probably going to be a good thing and just working with new technology so that kind of ex uh, expands my knowledge into new products so that's a good thing uh, but back to financial stuff uh bought more in stocks put more away in cash bought 300 in crypto and then silver i, I was very surprised with all of this maybe it happened too quick um not enough people were running to silver i believe there was an explanation Oh man, I forgot who, I think it was Lynette Zhang of uh, ITM Trading, I believe, uh, ITM Trading Partners. And Lynette Zhang was saying what happens is um, silver get goes down and takes this hit uh, because everything kind of takes a hit in the uh, market itself. And, you know, people start selling off silver just so they can actually be in a better cash position in some cases. She had another reason as well, but I... I totally totally forgot it but um she did a a, a a live stream about it and a couple other things so uh in terms of silver though i went ahead and bought another 10 ounces so two five ounce bars uh whereas the earlier that day like in the wee hours of the morning i made an order for five ounces and that was at the market was at about 17 dollars or so an ounce about like a seven seventeen forty or so by the time I bought my other two bars, and that bar was probably about a hundred dollars and six cents or something like that. Uh, no, probably yeah, a hundred dollars and sixty cents or so. By the time I bought my second bar, silver was down to sixteen dollars an ounce, and, or sixteen forty or sixteen thirty an ounce. And I bought two more bars after spot price and everything like that. Um, I, it came out to be about $191 and some change for two ounces of two, uh, two bar, two, uh, 10 ounces of silver. And I was like, $191. You know, that's a $9 savings, if you will, or $9 depreciation, really. A $9 depreciation in a matter of a couple hours in one day. And just the market selling off and like, you know, a little bit of blood in the streets. And I only say a little bit because the bleeding stopped and um, the market bounced back. So I was very surprised on M1 Finance, uh, my 
my metals mining and energy portfolio did fairly well and that's up my Roth IRA portfolio with all those different index funds actually has been performing um, uh, hasn't been performing well um, it hasn't been performing bad or anything but it's the one I have the most money in and in comparison to some of the other portfolios it's not doing as well um, probably you know eight hundred dollars invested into that and I'm probably negative maybe $10 or so. So in comparison, it's not doing as good. And then uh, the other portfolio, uh, the passive income portfolio based off of uh, the, jo the Joseph Carlson show. And I, I took out financials because I didn't, I didn't want to do anything that really had, uh, you know, like the Royal Bank of Canada or the uh, you know JP Morgan Chase and all that other stuff Citigroup I, I didn't want to have any part of them in my portfolio because I believe that you know uh, the economy looks ripe for disruption in terms of the banks having an issue um, again you know they might get saved again so on and so forth um, and it wasn't really so much a feeling it was just like I just don't believe in that asset class or that um, sector or market if you will uh, so I took that out of my portfolio, uh, beefed up a couple other things, especially tech and uh, oh, what else did I did? Uh, beefed up tech, telecommunications, added a couple things in there, added a couple things in the real estate trust uh, or the real estate portion of that portfolio, and it's done fairly. Um, and it is that's done fairly well as well. So. Uh, out of $250 invested in both portfolios, uh, the energy was up probably like $4 or so, and the the passive income for portfolio based off the Joseph Carson show was probably up probably like $2, $2 as well. Kind of fluctuated between negative 2, positive 2. So that was, um, that actually looked good, and I'm trying to remember all of this in terms of just like oh okay this is what happened here this is what happened here so on and so forth so i think that's a really good thing so um in terms of just kind of coming up with a theory uh, a model if you will and then saying okay this is the model i want to run with and making refinements where necessary so i'm really happy about that um the silver play the silver buy i'm really happy about uh, dump 300 in cryptocurrencies those were down as well at the same time so essentially a lot of people were just it looks like a lot of people were cashing out um, in terms of uh, in terms of just getting ready for possible coronavirus uh, infection or spread in their area things like that so that really worked out well in terms of investments and kind of buying that little dip and then of course still having cash on the side and being prepared for that um you know a lot of people aren't taking the virus seriously uh i know i joke about it even at uh, my day job and um i don't to a lot of people in there don't take it seriously as well um i'm not taking it super serious but i am still trying to say hey listen shit could happen so I went to walmart a moment ago and bought like 140 dollars worth of stuff like you know, can uh, quite a few canned goods, uh, some of those Campbell chunky soups, uh, like you know the the cheese and broccoli soups and stuff like that. Something that would be that I can still eat no matter what later on. Um, again, you still have to watch out for the sodium with that. But what if if anything, what I would do is if we have to ration things out a little bit, only drink like half a can or something like that, and then go from there. So. Uh, I'm going to be putting this stuff away, putting it to the side, putting it in a little bin, and then just not doing anything with it um, and just leaving it alone. So that's one thing I wanted to uh, Those are a couple things I wanted to say and just talk about and say, hey, listen, you know, the point of all this is just, hey, let's be let's be cautious. Let's err on the side of caution. Um, let's do things that will prep ourselves for now and into the future. Uh, you know, some people like, especially preppers and the, uh, the, the, the metal bugs, silver bugs, uh, which I am one of, uh, it, people in that community are totally against stocks. You know, they don't really want any part of it. They think it's BS. It's, it's all bank, funny money, so on and so forth. But there's kind of, you still have to have a foot in 
the reality reality not just the reality and possible in some cases fantasy that we that some of us silver bugs have where we're walking up with this big old thick this uh big old pouch of money you know as if we could just walk around with that and not get shot or robbed or what have you uh especially if there's total lawlessness and people's money isn't worth the, the same amount like somebody won't run up in your house things like that you know so uh, I think some of us have these these fantasies, I, myself included, I, I, I share in those fantasies as well. But um, I still try to base myself on reality of my situation and say, hey, listen, if stuff goes down, shit hits the fan, having bullets, um, having, uh, you know, some type of money, cash on hand, banks aren't working or inoperable. Uh, you know, people are trying to take money out. It's only cash. There's no credit cards. Systems start breaking down because people aren't getting out. Things like that. You know, if you really have some type of apocalypse, uh, influ- uh, what's it called? Coronavirus apocalypse, if you will. Then how are you going to handle that? You know, people not having uh, shortages. They're having shortages of masks and things like that. It's like I listened to the Silver Report uncut. And, you know, he had just a very sobering talk and tone, really, in his conversation talking about saying or in his uh, his video talking about, listen, this is just the reality of it. This thing could really happen. This thing could really affect us. This thing could actually come and decimate a large portion of our population around the world. Yeah. Yes, it's not the uh, bird flu or anything like that or the Spanish flu. Um, but at the same time, you know, these things are serious and it, you could be next. You could be in this situation. I've already been sick two times in. So right before I started my new job in December, I was sick. And then again in January, you know, like that's two times already. And I'm like, yo, now I'm taking my vitamins. I have some left over and just sitting there taking them every day, you know, um, still do my exercise and everything like that. So it's like I, I, uh, when you look at all this, you, you really have to be very careful and then put yourself in the proper situation to take advantage of, you know, market turnarounds, but also take advantage of the situation in terms of, OK, um, if I run out of food, you know, can I go to my neighbor and say, hey, listen, let's do something together. Uh, I got quite a few mango trees here at the house that we can uh, eat off of, especially if se- when season comes around, at, at least. Um, there's that, but you have to wait until then. Then you also have to protect that. You know, what are you doing to protect all of that? I have tons of bullets, but then it's like, okay, family members, everybody, let's come together and pool our resources, you know? So it's like a lot of these things you have to watch out for. Things aren't being made in China anymore. Supply chains are already drying up. I'm already seeing one or two effects in terms of uh, IT stuff where um, HP, some of their servers, some of their computers that we have, laptops are on back order. And you could only wonder why it's on back order. Stuff's made in China. So if all these, some of these semiconductors, capacitors and other parts, things like that, they're going to have to start hoarding them. Uh, CDW sent us an email earlier today saying, hey, listen, you know, this model's on back order from HP. Uh, we'll let you, we have one on, we have X amount on order. We'll let you know when we get them, so on and so forth. These things are really happening and they're starting to affect us in little ways. And it's really kind of um, under the cover ways and it hasn't really shown itself. What happens when they can't get any gas or anything like, or you can't get any gas, like it's hurricane season or something like that. You know, like what happens when your food runs out? I'm not even joking about like, I'm not even fooling myself, I should say, with the little bit that I just got and <laughs> the exorbitant price that I paid for it. Um, but the I, I paid a premium for this stuff, of course, because it's from Walgreens and they're a little bit more expensive, but not as expensive as, say, something like 7-Eleven for the same product. But, um, you know, what happens when my neighbors start saying, hey, man, you know, I noticed you got something or like, you know, they want to come through my house and see what I got in my pantry. <laughs> they going to see what I got in my fucking safe, too. It's not to talk all big and bad, but got to prepare for this stuff. I have X amount of rounds. 
you know, I got uh, I got the silver. I might actually go to the bank this week and uh, pull out some cash so I can have some cash in hand, at least maybe a thousand dollars or so. Um, credit cards. You know, if we have like a real black swan event and we're already hearing about earnings from Visa and um, earnings from the earnings report from Visa and how they're saying, hey, because of, you know, coronavirus supply chain issues and other stuff that they have to actually change their earnings reports and they don't know. They have to change their stance on their earnings report really to clear that up. And they don't know what's going to happen in the future in the next couple months if they will, they will be able to rebound. Now I have to look at even my own employment and then, you know, people that aren't even cash positive in their business, um, even my salon, for instance, but not being cash positive and not having, you know, any type of uh, any type of reserve, if you will, and not having to rely on the bank just so you can make payroll because you're getting loans and all this other stuff and the banks help floating you with in terms of uh purchasing merchandise and then you have to look at yo if the supply chain screwed up there is no merchandise to purchase so you you have an even bigger problem a problem you don't want you can't get anything to sell and if you can't get anything to sell that's if that's just as bad, if not worse, than not having the money to purchase the things to sell. Because at least you could purchase a little bit less because you don't have enough money, or maybe work something out with, um, you know, having a line of credit or something like that in another way, shape, form, or fashion, or selling off certain things that you have just so you can um, scrounge up the money so you can actually go ahead and buy other things, you know, or buy what you actually need versus the things that you want in your storefront, what have you. So when you're looking at all of this and how this this virus and also how just the markets uh, needing a correction, uh, and you can see the markets just needing a correction because of the 90, what, the $100 drop in Tesla in one freaking day. In one day of trading, the, the stock drops. The, the stock drops about like, uh, I think, ten percent or so. Uh, I haven't checked if it's rebounded. Tesla is not something that I'm in directly. Um, I am in Tesla, uh, maybe through one of my index funds. I'm not exactly sure, especially if they're in the S and P five hundred, which I doubt they are. Um, kind of doubt. I don't think they're in S and P five hundred. Could be totally wrong, but I know they are in ARKW, which is a uh, technology focused um, uh, ETF or fund, and they own uh, a decent share of Tesla and other technology companies and things like that. So I'm not in Tesla directly, but I am invested in Tesla through that ETF that I know of and possibly others that I have. Um, I hold, uh, in terms of ETFs, the bigger ones are VOO, uh, VYM, VYMI, um, VYMI, VOO, VNQ for real estate, um, uh, BND and BNDX as well, and, uh, Noble, NOBL, um, NOBL and VOO are my top holdings, along with my growth, por growth portfolio, which I own, which is just a, a couple hand-picked stocks, uh, mainly tech stocks, um, and uh, some other stuff like uh, Space, uh, SPCE, which is uh, Virgin, uh, Virgin Galaxy, I guess is what they call themselves. So anyways, um, I'm not directly into Tesla. And uh, I, ex I do have some exposure to them, though. I do believe in what Elon Musk is doing. Um, I just don't believe in the price uh, that his stock is at right now. Um, I do believe it's at least a four, maybe $500 stock. Um, I do believe it can be way more than that once they deliver in terms of... Uh, in terms of some of the technology that they're doing, they have delivered um, masterfully actually already, but I do believe they can do more, should be doing, or will be doing more um, into the future. And I, I, I Tesla is one of those where I need to own at least maybe a, a whole share, if not more. But I want that price to go down to 
I think at max it should probably be about six, seven hundred dollars, and you you just look at probably even less than that. But you're looking at comparisons in terms of numbers and delivery and things like that compared to your old school manufacturers, which may not be an apples to apples comparison, but they um they are auto manufacturers nonetheless. Um, but uh, Tesla brings so much more to it, but the it, the speculation is is cult uh, speculation in my eyes and uh, it, it reminds me of uh, 2018 going into 2019 the uh, the cryptocurrency craze it that I I, I I was like I when I see Tesla and what's going what it's going through I'm like oh I've seen this before <laughs> I know you too well old friend so be cautious guys uh, look at all these things and I I'm trying to keep an eye on it while you know um, doing programming and other things but it, there's so much out there so much floating around and what we really have to do is uh, take a little bit of the things that we find important uh, follow those heavily and connect with other people that follow the other things so they can at least give you the Reader's Digest um, I'm, a, I'm a millennial, of course, and I, I need the Reader's Digest. I can't take in, uh, I can't, I, I, need it, I need the too long didn't read version, the TLDR version, you know. So give me the, the snippets, give me the highlights. I don't watch ESPN Sports Center. I, I, I definitely don't watch it with the sound on. I put that sucker on mute. I just want to see their top 10, top 8, whatever the hell they did for that day, and then maybe read some of the captions, and that's about it. So give me that, and I, I need it condensed. Um, so essentially, that that's kind of like how I'm looking at a lot of things right now and trying to restructure even myself where it's not getting into any and everything. It's just getting into certain things that uh, I have greater interest in and want to have um, better exposure to, but also at the same time... Um, still connecting and listening to those that are uh, battling, fighting, watching other fights in different arenas. Uh, but I'll leave it at that. Uh, it's kind of loose talk there, but really just about preparation for the most part at the beginning. Um, guys, be safe. And uh, I, I really wish you guys all the best in, in the next coming weeks. But, um, you know, if you're my neighbor and you got food, and I need it. <laughs> yeah, you better give it up. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for listening. Peace.